Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Shout out to the UT men's basketball team, Shaka Smart, all the kids. Congrats on winning the Maui Invitational. That wasn't in Maui, but in Nashville, North Carolina, defeating the North Carolina Tar Heels in the championship game. And they didn't just defeat North Carolina. They defeated Davidson in the first round. They defeated the hometown reps. And everybody that was cooking against them, even at times, won Bill Walton on the broadcast. So, guys, I'm just, I'm, I'm so excited for hoops at Texas, just in general. I mean, Charlie Collier, uh, Celeste Taylor, they're out there balling for the women's. They're back in the top 25. Charlie had 44 points and 16 boards. Big 12 Women's Player of the Week. Unbelievable performance. Most points since 1994. Just completely went off against North Texas. They're playing Louisiana Tech tonight, so I want to show the women some love. And Vic Schaefer, you guys are doing a tremendous job over there getting this program back to where it needs to be. Um, speaking of getting the program back to where it needs to be, this is a, this is a veteran-laden Texas Hoops team led by Matt Coleman. And leaders lead. And Matt Coleman, I said it on Twitter, for those who don't follow, and make sure you hit that like button, especially since we Maui Invitational Champs. And I know it's ridiculous for a preseason tournament and all this type of stuff, but y'all saw Kansas, Duke, North Carolina, the teams that ended up going to the Final Four and winning championships, go, kind of coincides with the Maui Invitational, however you want to look at it. So great accomplishment for the men's. But going back to Matt Coleman, Ben Clutch All 2020, Oklahoma buzzer beater. Almost buzzer beater, except for point one. And I always get leery of the clock, especially if you're a Spurs fan, you've been through point four with Derek Fisher. But I always get leery of the clock. But it's point one left. I will consider that a buzzer beater as well. And just leading, you know, leading this team. Things got stagnant in the second half. You know, we're, 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 we're we, we, we come out and start great. Our energy's there. And, and that's another thing. This product that Shaka and this team have right now, it's a great product because. They play above the rim. They're extremely athletic. They play exceptional defense. But most importantly, they play hard. Look, there was a sequence today where Matt Coleman dove on the floor and then Brock Cunningham dove on the floor simultaneously, you know, going after a loose ball. And and just an, a level of effort that I haven't seen in a long time, honestly, since I can remember with this program, probably since like Royal Ivy and, and, and James Thomas and guys like that, that used to go all out and Brad Buckman, uh, for those who don't remember, you know, early 2000s, mid 2000s UT hoops, that was, that was a good program under Rick Barnes, but this group under Shaka, he's found some guys, they have a great rotation. We know what they brought back and what they added with the Greg Brown and Greg Brown's giving them energy. Yeah. He's working on the skill level. He hit his first three today and you know, the, college game with officiating and, and it's one of my frustrations and why why college basketball is just struggling as a product in general in my opinion they don't let the athletes be athletes they're going to call knick-knack fouls for everything they're not really allowed to be physical they're going to reward you know flopping and other things like that so it's it's been a frustrate a level of frustration for greg but it's also a learning experience for him to get his skill level up the brother has all the athleticism in the world the brother has all of the the you know the physical there, and he has a motor. He has he has an exceptional motor, which has helped him on the defensive side, in my opinion. What he's got to figure out is, hey, slowing myself down, skill level. Let me work around my man, get around contact, slow it down, knowing when to drive versus when to shoot. Um, I think that'll help his percentage, his shooting percentages as well. Just decision making, if you will. But that's that that comes with experience in college basketball in general. And somebody that athletic, you've been just getting your way at every level. There's gonna it's gonna come to that. And on top of playing with a bunch of experienced guys that have been playing together, Courtney Ramey and, and Matt Coleman and, and Sims when he's engaged, they have their own thing. Now today wasn't a game that Sims was engaged. Sims was really engaged in the Indiana game, a uh, game in which we were not favored. But all that being said, the beauty is the depth because. Jericho Sims is, you know, something's going on with him today where he's not super effective. Andrew Jones is not effective. And Kai Jones steps up. And Kai Jones has probably been our, our best player, honestly. If I if I were to say who's the best player on the team from over these first four games, I would say it's Kai Jones um, on both sides of the ball. He's a phenomenal prospect in his own right. 
and you know his growth. I see what Shaka was talking about in terms of his growth from year one to year two, and the sky's the limit for that brother, especially considering his length. Um, you know, just his his energy. He's hitting the floor, and he's still really learning how to play and learning his capabilities. He's got a already good touch on terms of when he tries to shoot the ball and even putting the ball on the floor. So I'd like to see him get more minutes. I know he's kind of coming off the bench right now in, in more of a six-man role, but when you have that type of depth, when you have glue guys like a Brock Cunningham who can just come in, I call him Captain Scrap, and he can come in and reset the energy. He can come in and just, you know, just pester people. And the good teams, you look at the elite teams like the Kansases and the Dukes over the years, they always have a dude like Brock Cunningham on the floor. They always have that guy on the roster. And that guy's always a pest. And we finally have somebody like that. And he's starting to knock down open shots, which validates him being on the floor for more minutes. As long as he's hitting those corner threes and they're available for kick picks, ready when called upon, cuts hard, offensive rebounding, being a pest, you will stay on the floor, my friend. Um, but going back to Matt Coleman, his shooting is helping us. And his consistency is key. Because Courtney Ramey is is more of a natural playmaker, but Courtney Ramey and Andrew Jones, Andrew Jones more more of a natural scorer. They haven't been as consistent as Matt Jones, as Matt, excuse me, Matt Coleman. We got so many Joneses on the team. Matt Coleman, who's just doing a terrific job of being ready to shoot off the catch, but also getting his off the dribble. And twice at the end of the game today against North Carolina, he goes to his right and gets his shot, including the game winner, going to his right. And, and that's really, really difficult in, in a high-level trait of a, of a left-handed player. So I, I'm just, I, you know, it, it, it's early. I told y'all I was drinking the Kool-Aid before the season. I told y'all this was an ex, this is going to be an exciting season, an exciting team. I don't know. This is a tough conference. Baylor's really, really good. Kansas just had a big comeback win against Kentucky the, uh, last night. Like, this is going to be a good conference. I know Tech, Chris Beard, they'll figure some things out after their loss. West Virginia's good. West Virginia's being ready to play uh, number one Gonzaga coming up. So, like, there's 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 really, really good teams in this conference, and it's going to be a dogfight. We have a terrific stretch of test, and it's already begun. Davidson was a test. Those are the type of teams you have to beat if you want to advance out of the first round of the tournament, right? Um, Indiana, like I said earlier, Indiana was favored against us, and they're going to be a good team. They, they beat... Um, uh, Stanford today. Stanford, who who played very well against North Carolina, and then North Carolina being ranked number fourteen in the country. And and the thing is, today's matchup was interesting because all these matches are interesting. And Texas has been winning in different ways, which is also another thing that points to the coaching. You have to give Shaka credit for that. When you start winning against different types of teams, where Davidson is running high level complex offense with experienced players and they're, sh- they're, good, they're they're shooting the ball well they're getting stuff in and out then you go to indiana who's good at running and getting up and down the floor and you cut off the pipe and they can't they can't get any water and they can't get up and down and then you play north carolina who can match you with the length but whereas ours is more length verticality athleticism theirs is more length girth strength and they were playing bully ball in the second half, especially just getting second chance points, offensive rebounding. And Roy Williams, look, if, if I wasn't a Texas basketball fan, you know, I, 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 I am a Texas basketball fan, but I love UNC hoops. I've always been a North Carolina fan, so it's always been interesting when they play North Carolina because I've always been a fan. Just Jordan, college basketball in particular, I've always liked what North Carolina has, and so I understand how Roy Williams builds these teams and, and you look at some of the bigs and some of the rotations he's had over the years. This is kind of what he's trying to construct here with the young guards and they had their way in the paint through so many times in the second half. The beauty of this for Texas is they fought their way through. They figured stuff out when North Carolina took the lead. They're against the officials as I talked about like not letting our guys play. You know, not, you know, we can't do Greg, Greg Brown's out here getting, catching an elbow in the chest from some seven foot 270 guy and he's getting called for a foul with his hands up. So, you know, just working your way around that and, and figuring out how to win, it builds that trust in your teammates, it builds trust in the team and the buy-in 
for Shaka Smart, and they're heading in the right direction. I know a lot of people that are, are skeptical have said, hey, Steve, Texas has started well before. They started 5-0 and before in a Shaka Smart, 4-0. And then they tailed off right before conference play started, and it's been a struggle, especially in conference. Well, it's also eye test. And this team looks different from those teams. The competition is also different from what these teams have faced. And it's also just, you look at how they're, they're so much more aggressive offensively. And even when they get in lulls, at least the lulls are like they're trying to attack and they get an offensive foul. There's been, like, over the years when we've really had problems offensively, where we're getting shot clock violations and horrible shots that are contested and fallaways, you're not seeing as much of that. You're seeing more dunks. You're seeing us get to the free throw line a lot more. These are all critical to the development of this basketball program moving forward. So just watching the games these past three days, winning the Maui Invitational in Asheville, fake Maui, faux Maui, I'm excited for this team. And enjoy the product. That's that's my message today. Enjoy the product. We don't know how far they're going to go. But there's a lot of fun players here. There's going to be play, there's players here on this team that are going to play in the NBA. And it's exciting. And, and Rashaka is going to be able to re- continue to recruit off of this. One thing you can say about Shaka Smart, and that's kind of one of the differentiators between him and Tom Herman, the recruiting momentum hasn't died with him. He's still able to get the five stars and, and the kids in and keep the local talent home. So as long as we can t- continue to see that and they can grow and take advantage of the experience and everything they have this year in terms of the front court, in terms of your backcourt experience, and picking each other up. Andrew Jones is going to have some better days. Jericho Sims is going to be more engaged down the, down the road. But when you have people like Royce Ham who are selfless, that can come in and give you energy, and Brock Cunningham, and just you know help save save the day, that's what you want to see out of a team. They are a real team. And I love it watching them. Guys, let me know in the comments how you feel. I know y'all always ask me for UT basketball videos. We'll have some more content probably week over week. Uh, in terms in terms of the team, but this was exciting today and, and, and uh, had fun celebrating with those of you who follow on Twitter. If you're not following on Twitter, you're missing out. First, hit the like button while you're on the channel, but A, you know, B, follow us on Twitter. And I have a little gift for you since I told you I was out dealing with some family stuff. Um, we found a picture of baby Steve and baby Brian, who is my younger brother here. So you can get a little picture or action of of us here when we were kids. Uh, my little brother looking like Mr. T in the bow tie, just angry. He still looks like that, only a lot skinnier now. However, I appreciate y'all. Horns always up. Hook them.